Hi everyone. So, uh, welcome to Mastering the Art of Pitching, Framing Your Solution and Secure the Win Workshop. So, our speakers are former winners of multiple hackathons like Kitai 2023, TCS ASEAN Sustainathon 2022, Debbie Yenro, Chunrong, and Ziqing, a collective force reshaping the hackathon landscape. Their winning journey isn't just about the victories, it's a tale of resilience, innovation, and mastering the art of pitching and crafting solutions that resonate. So now, let us welcome them to deliver the workshop. Debbie, the floor is yours. All right, thank you, Zixing. Give me a moment as I share my screen. Okay, so thank you so much, Ginny. And once again, thank you, Judy SCUM, for inviting us back to give a talk on today's topic that is mastering the art of pitching and framing solution and securing the win. So we believe that, you know, uh, pitching is a much needed skill in your hackathon journey, regardless whether is it a 24 hour hackathon or is it a, a long term hackathon. So we hope that you'll be able to take away a few things and also a few details, more details that can help you to stand out um, among the rest of your competitors. All right. So before we start with our talk, allow me to briefly introduce our speakers for tonight. So you have myself, I'm Debbie. I'm also a UM student and alongside I have my teammates who are Chunrong, Yenro and Ziqing. So today's talk can be break down into four parts, which is literally the entire hackathon journey. So we'll start off from framing your problem statement to your solution and then to coding your solution and finally pitching. So at the end of our session, we'll be having a Q&A. So be sure to scan this QR code. You can also find this at the bottom of your slides. So be sure to scan it, drop your questions, and we'll answer them at the end end of the session. So without further ado, allow me to pass the mic to pass the floor to Yenro for our first part. All right, thanks Debbie. Okay, hi guys, I'm Yenro and I'll be sharing about how to properly frame a problem statement for our hackathon. <clears throat> so there are basically five parts for these sections, which are leveraging SDG goals, defining problems, brainstorming on identified problems, crafting problem statements, and last, revisiting SDG goals. And without further ado, let's dive into the first part, which is leveraging the SDG goals. Next slide, please. And before that, do you know what is SDG? Uh, I'm pretty sure that most of you know, but for those that are not that familiar with SDG, SDG stands for Sustainable Development Goals. And it is basically basically like a global to-do list created by the United Nations. Currently, there are 17 goals that everyone in the world is trying to achieve by 2030. These goals cover things like ending hunger, making sure everyone has good health, providing quality education, and taking care of the environment. It's basically a plan to make the world a better place for everyone. Next slide, please. <clears throat> okay, so after knowing what is SDG, we first need to see how do we use SDG to craft a problem statement in a hackathon setting. So basically, I recommend everyone here to always refer to SDG and utilize SDG as a framework to help with our decision making as well as leveraging SDG for a comprehensive overview of our target industries. Next slide, please. <clears throat> um, so I will make an example by using SDG3, which is good health and well-being. So basically, SDG3 has lots of targets and problems that um, they wanted to tackle. And from those targets, I have picked up four targets from SDG3 which are target 3.1, target 3.2, target 3.4, and target 3.7. <clears throat> okay, let's have a detailed look, shall we? SDG 3.1 aims to reduce 
the maternal mortality. SDG 3.2 focuses on preventing deaths of newborns and children under five. SDG 3.4 seeks to decrease the premature mortality from non-communicable diseases, uh, whereas SDG 3.7 strives for universal access to sexual and reproductive healthcare services by 2030. Next slide, please. <clears throat> And after knowing what, what SDG3 is all about, what are we going to do with it? You know, like imagine we are now in a hackathon setting. After knowing all the SDGs, do we just pick SDGs that we are interested in, copy paste, and then you know, use it as our problem statement? Not really, right? Yeah, we all know it's not the case. Even with SDG, we still need to do our research. In fact, um, do a lot of research about the problems and SDG as an assistant. Only after researching, we will incorporate SDGs with the context and background information we found to enhance clarity. And basically by doing research, we will be updated on the current problems of this specific industry. Let's look at the uh, photo picture attached on the right side of the screen. Reality checks. United Nations reports that in every two minutes, a woman dies from preventable causes related. And in the globe, almost 800 women die every day. Did you, do you realize something fishy with these two reality checks? Well, actually, it's basically the same data. We just uh, rephrase the sentence and visualize the data differently uh, so that it will enhance clarity for the audiences. Yeah, next please. Next slide please. Yeah, um, a lot of people, including me, myself, are very anxious in hackathon setting, given that we don't have enough time, you know, we are in such a hurry and everything needs to be fast and agile. We don't really allocate enough time for brainstorming. Or to say the least, we just don't brainstorm, you know, we just straight away jump into the designing and the coding part. But uh, I'm here really wanting to emphasize on the importance of having a brainstorming session with your hackathon teammates, because it's usually during those brainstorming sessions that we came out with lots of ideas, as well as all the hidden, hidden challenges so uh, brainstorming sessions, very important and something that we tend to miss out as well, which is documenting. It's um, crucial to document our brainstorming sessions by writing down all the ideas, opinions and challenges being discovered. Next slide, please. <clears throat> OK, now that. Now it's finally the time to write a problem, proper problem statement. Craft each problem statement in a concise, direct and easily comprehensible single sentence. Express each problem in a short and clear sentence, getting straight to the point and make sure each sentence clearly captures the main issue. All right, um, let's see on the right side, you know, there's some examples of what a simple and straightforward problem statements look like. Um, yeah, just basically one sentence straight to the point and easily comprehensible. Next slide, please. <clears throat> yeah, and now that we have written down our problem statement, our work is not done yet. We still have the last step, which is to revisit back the SDG goals to align our missions, what we wanted to tackle with their goals for the intended impacts. For example, in the problem statement uh, on this picture the first part of the sentence maternal mortality rates remain high despite improved healthcare this part of the sentence aligned with sdg 3.1 and 3.2 and for the second part of the sentence highlighting the need for more effective strategies to prevent deaths this second part of the sentence aligned with sdg 3.7 which is good which is great to, oh my God, what happened? Um, sorry, am I audible? Yeah, we can hear you, no problem. Okay, yeah, uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, 
<clears throat> okay, so to wrap up this section, how do we properly frame a problem statement? Uh, back, please. Yeah. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, so um, basically to wrap up this section, how do we properly frame a problem statement? We do it first by leveraging the SDG goals, then define the problems, then we brainstorm on identified problems, and next we craft the problem statements, and lastly, we revisit the SDG goals. And um, next I'll pass to Chunro for the, um, next we'll have a break for two minutes before I pass to Chunro. And during this break for the, during this break, you guys um, can ask the questions. If you have any questions, feel, please feel free to ask in slido.com and the QR code, you can ask the question by scanning the QR code or typing the code here at slido.com. Um, hi guys, I've seen few questions coming in and um, we will be answering those questions after the whole presentations. Just for clarification. Okay, so uh, next 
it's my turn. I, I will explain about uh, how to framing the solution. So my name is Chun Long. Let me, uh, okay, let me start. Uh, first of the point is we need to understand uh, your target audience. And then next, we need to think from a user perspective. And then third is we need to work your solution from your problem statement. And then the last is the feasibility of the solution. So next slide. Okay, so after we framing after we framing our problem statement, uh, we have to know one of the most important thing is is we need to target our audience. So understanding about our audience is really very important, especially when we identify which SEG goal we might need to be choose. So um, how we need to uh, target uh, our audience? So first of all, after we uh, framing the relevant statement and identify the SDG, we might need to do a research. Means we conducting a research. Uh, means we going surface level informations, and then we gain the deep understanding for our target audience, and then we can using a lot of methods. Uh, we can using like survey, uh, like Google Forms or something, and then we can using doing the interview section. Uh, to uh, interview our target audience about what is the problems they're facing and then market analysis and doing some data collection and then all of this uh, research we can doing a data analysis stuff and then to prove uh, or we to find the insight and how is the pro what is the problem faced by the target audience then we can identify uh, the key pens point by recognizing the specific challenge or problem faced by the target audience. What is the obstacle? What is the translation? What is the amid needs? Uh, for example, uh, for this case, uh, SDG go, uh, maybe we can uh, solve the problems for the pregnancy women. Like maybe the pregnancy woman is hard to keep track for the pregnancy cycles or some of the appointments uh, as there's a lot of a body checkup and then they, they are hard to keep track of it. So these are all, of, all are the obstacles faced by the attack audience. And then we need to find the ways to help them to solve it. And then establish a clear understanding. So we need to step in into the shoes of your target audience by seeing the world from their perspective, understanding the motivations and feel and desire. So for example, uh, maybe you want to focus on doctors uh, and you want to have the doctors to keep track for appointment stuff. Yeah, the doctor is now is very busy for uh, you need, they need to take care of patients, patients or something else. So is that you really can do an app to simplify uh, th their actions and their needs. So all of these things is uh, we can help and then we are really take care and understand what is our target audience really needs. So next slide. Okay, we need to think from a user perspective. Okay, it means we need to adopt the end user mindset. Now we are putting yourself, we can putting ourselves in their position and think, what is the problem we really trying to help? And then is that this solution really help them? So, for example, uh, in this SDG go, uh, for parents, women, uh, maybe the, for husband, husband is really want to help, uh, help the uh, wife, but he don't know what is the way to help them. So, we can thinking about uh, their positions. Husband now is really uh, hard to keep track for a wife pregnancy status. So, what else we can do as solutions to help them? Uh, there's a feature for emergency calls and activity records for tracking, help them to smooth the progress. So husband every time will know the, about the updates from the pregnancy woman. Next slide. So now we need to work for solutions after understanding uh, what is our needs from the target audience. So first of all, we need to align with identified our problems. So ensuring our solution is stay focused on addressing the specific issue you identify during a research. 
And then every solution uh, should directly contribute to the solution. It means we don't need to have too much and too many solutions for uh, one ideal. Actually, actually, it's not necessary to do so because in the hackathons, actually, we just have uh, enough time to doing some special thing uh, to uh, to make this our ideas solution better. So it's better we focus on just a few solution and to solve their problems instead of we doing a lot of fancy stuff. But actually, there's not a specific way to help the clients to solve the problem. So that's very important. And then another, another step is we need to establish a clear correlation it means each function and functionality of components of a solution should have a direct connections to the problems you are trying to solve. Like here is a uh, examples for the case. Like if you want to help the pregnant women to solve a problem, you're doing a platform, you, you provide solutions that you're doing a platform for buying a baby health care product. Is that really can help them? Because there's a lot of platform like uh, uh, e-commerce app and also some of the retail shop like body, uh, like mother cares or something. They really can help us help them to uh, solve this kind of solution already. So it's not necessary we need to do the same things. We want to do something special for them. So if we doing a sharing knowledge platform, uh, I think it's more ideal. It's a more ideal solution to help them to solve a problem, because this is the specific platform for them to uh, help each other and sharing knowledge how to care about their babies and all, all of this stuff. And then next, we need to refer back to our problem statement also. As after we thinking a lot of solution, we must maintain a sense of purpose and direction. We need to solve the problems. So instead, we just uh, doing a lot of uh, solutions, but without and without refer back to a problem statement. It's very uh, dangerous. As now, refer back to the problem statement actually can help you to avoid from straying from the core objective. So next slide. Okay, after we framing our solutions, we need to think is that this solution is feasible, the, is feasible to do or not? So, so first of all, we need to evaluate the technical feasibility. It means we assessing whether you prop, your proposed solution is technically implemented. So we, as, uh, as a developer side, we might think uh, what technology to, should be used or why we choose them. For example, if we need to uh, implement the chat box, uh, we might think what is the AI or NLP tools should be chosen. So is that uh, really uh, good for the tools? Is that this tools is really helpful? Uh, and then we need to experience for the cost and so on. And then Another thing is we need to think about the application or web. What is the things we need to do uh, to present our solutions? So if count, if, if you refer to uh, what we need to do, and then we need to choose, of course, we need to choose what framework to we choose. It means we can choose uh, some of the Google technologies to do the some of the application, mobile applications or website. And then we need to think about maintainability also it means how we how we need to maintain the applications and then you need to think about the cost and the marketing plan as normally the clients will ask you or just will ask you how you maintain these applications if you if your application cost is really a uh, loss how you going to be an ideal solution for the for the customer or target audience and then another thing is we don't need to uh have a high industry level when we developing a prototype for solutions as uh, this is just a product and then we not need to uh, too care about the industrial level next next time yeah and then we another step is we need to consider how an apps can solve the problems it means considering how an apps can solve the problem in the application layers like uh, in this scenario, we can doing some calendar tracking system for parents women to keep track the pregnancy cycles and help them, help them to plan the body checkings. 
And then for, this app should be easy to use for, as we need to doing some uh, user-friendly UX UI design, as this is crucial uh, for users to use it. And then I think this is, we need to care about uh, this solution is appropriate and effective because this app, uh, you must show this app is really works better compared to other applications that provide the same issue, the same solutions or different solutions to the idea issue. We must prove then this solution is really helpful to the society or the target audience. So um, that's all my part. And now I pass to Q&A sections. guys we'll have a break for two minutes and in the meantime in the meantime feel free to ask any questions that you have at slido.com by scanning the qr code or typing the code thanks Okay, now I will pass to the Zijing to explain about the technical parts. Yeah. Yeah. Hi hey guys. Um, my name is Zijing, and yeah, I'll be continuing to present on how you might uh, call your solution out. Basically, just transform the idea that you brainstorm with your friends, and just transform it into a real system. So in the slide, you can see a few uh, application that me and my teammates built. The first one, left hand side, is your uh, hackathon 2022. And yeah, we secure a win. And yeah, the second one is uh, Tune Project Hackathon. Uh, basically, <laughs> in include some fancy 3D animation into the UI. And we didn't secure a win, we just secure finalists. And the last one is uh, the Guitar Hack solution that I built, which, which is uh, an API for my teammate to basically just use. So normally in hackathons, not the best UI to actually make you a win. So in this section, I uh, yeah move on to the next slide. In this section, I'll be sharing some tips and tricks on how to turn your ideas into the code pass uh, based on my experience. And I'll be splitting this section into three subparts, which is before the coding and during the coding and after you have finished your coding. And it is applicable to most of the hackathon out there, which is not just guitar hack. And I'll be staying as fast as possible to provide my recommendation instead of like opinion-based and bias. Yep. Move on to the next slide, please. And yeah, before you start coding, you should basically ensure that your ideas are being validated. This is super important because after you start coding, you are very difficult to change the whole the idea. So make sure that your ideas are being validated. You, you should talk to judges if possible. Sometimes a uh, hackathon out there might allow judges to talk to the participants. So you should catch like Bring, bring the judges to a table and then pitch your solution to them. Make, uh, ask for feedback. Obviously, if there's no judges, uh, call uh, 
on three to five mentors to validate your idea before proceeding proceeding to coding. Yeah, you should spend more time on ideating. Uh, previously, my hackathon experience, I spent roughly about 50-50% on ideation and also coding. Yeah, move on to the next slide. You should also list down the important modules, ideally more than two. Uh, this shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. Um, you should also list down by pages or routes with description, as shown in the top right corner of the slides. Uh, normally, what I do is slash home or slash index will be the landing page. And yeah, let's say you would like to implement a stock application. Yeah, this is how you include like uh, certain features inside uh, your description. To make uh, to actually have an overview on the entire application, yeah, think of wow factor features. Obviously, there's a lot of features um, you can take reference of. One, one is yeah, you can move on to the next slide. One is yeah, why combinator startup directory. In this uh, site, you can find a dozen of uh, startup uh, application that's. Uh, that's already in production. So let's say I want to implement like a healthcare application. I just input into the search bar healthcare and a ton of like 200 companies will be shown up. Let's say the second one, Synapsica Healthcare, right? There's a de description over there. AI enable automation of diagnosis radiology workflow. How interesting is that? So you can just click and hop into their site and see their features, uh, copy here, here and there, and uh, find find some ideas over there. And you can list while listing down your important modules. And next slide. Um, yeah, Jibber.com might be your uh, go-to app as well. You can search for really, really um, inspirational UI. Yeah, move on to the next slide. You should also um, draw the system architecture diagram uh, while listing down the important modules. This is what I think is quite useful because at the end, you also need to include this system architecture diagram into your slides. And last but not least, stack the modules by its priority. This actually um, prioritize, let's say you want to code uh, analytics route, then you just uh, put you just tag it as the first one, etc. Yeah, move on to the next slide. Sketch wireframe on paper. So if if you have a strong sense of design ins inspiration or creativity, you you actually can imagine how the entire app should, should flow. So you can ignore this. Um, normally, what I do is just roughly sketch like per module five minutes to to make the entire module flow clearer. Yeah, I'll find more ideas in dribble.com as well. Yeah, next slide. Yeah, choosing language or framework. This is a very important part to be noted on. You should choose the language or framework based on your experience and comfortability. So for me, Mostly, I'll be using like React, like building React application. I'll be using Next.js, Tailwind. That's for me. But you should choose your own um, language and framework based on your experience. Yeah, you should also choose based on the tech popularity itself. If you are first year stu CS student, you might not like learn a lot of tech, so you you can go to like Stack Overflow developer survey. And you can see like what is the top notch language you can use to let's say develop web application, mobile application, uh, command line interface, CLI, or an API. Yeah. And you can also consider no code tools as well. Webflow might be your first option, WordPress, Figma, etc. You should also um, make sure that the hackathon organizer allow you to use no code tools. Some might just uh, 
penalize you for being uh, using the local tools. You should use uh, coding programming to solve your problem. Yeah, move on to the next slide. Uh, yeah, before coding, you it is advisable to set up a re repository, whether it is a GitHub repository, GitLab, Bitbucket, etc. This is to facilitate uh, coding communication and also version control. It helps uh, code merging much more easier. And the below the three points is what I usually do, but you can also take it as an advice, but you can also in, ignore it. So what I usually do is allow the developer in my teams normally like two person to access to main branch. So we technically just push directly to main branch. We didn't have any like uh, opening uh, like pull request because this really improved the effic efficiency of our coding. And yeah, reduce the code review steps if possible. Make, make sure you resolve the conflict before pushing the main. Don't run git push dash f, which is force push the GitHub main branch. Yeah, next. Next slide, please. During coding, yeah, th there are four things you should take note of. Um, technically, one module handled by one developer. This is to reduce like uh, manpower dependency. The meaning of manpower dependency is, uh, let's say this feature inside a module, uh, this feature is dependent, depending on another developer features. So, to actually remove this situation, you might just one module, one entire module handled by one developer, reduce the code communication time. And this actually in increase the efficiency of coding. And yeah, take specific ownership to a certain module. If you have say three, three developers, one might take like landing page, one might take APIs, one might take uh, AI model. Yeah, depending on how you distribute the task. Next. Yeah, this is um, one of the hackathon that I participated, which is Payhack 2023. And yeah, we actually hard code some features because we run out of time for deploying uh, an object detection model on TFJS on the web. So we just technically um, code a hidden button on top and then when I click the hidden button, it actually switch the class. Like uh, in this case, like Bolognese uh, spaghetti bottle, I change to like say if I move to uh, carbonara, it will change to the based on the class. Yeah. In some cases, you might find it hard to code certain features. You can try to hack code. And I've seen a lot of like hackathon winners also take this route to win. Yeah. Move on to the next slide. Yeah, code with UI library might be the best um, advice I could give. Um, yeah, obviously there are tons of UI library out there, like um, web library, Flutter as well. And specifically in the slides, you can see the top top side one is called Next UI, and the top the bottom left is called Redix UI if you are coding in web and the uh, bottom right corner one lip gloss which is if you are coding like terminal application you are you are writing your code in golang and you can use like um lip, like ui library terminal ui library like lip gloss yeah you can search in github it's called like charm bracelet it's a company specifically did specifically funded for building like terminal application. Yeah, move on. Obviously, do not reinvent the wheel. There are a ton of open source application, like open source library out there. You can check it in GitHub. You should also check if there's any existing starter template. You can just directly import into your projects, install dependency and libraries do not reinvent the dependency and libraries. Yeah, I move on to the next one. 
after you have finished your coding, think about how might you demo the application. So normally the entire coding process, right? You you eventually didn't show your code in the slides. So you technically should show only the demo application. So yeah, put put your system architecture diagram and also text that into your slides as well. Yeah, move on to the next slide. Yeah, this this are uh, our tech stack for Kita Hack 2023. So we use Dart and backend we use Nexus serverless, serverless functions. Database we use Firestore and Fairscape. And for AI we use Jax uh, Flex for for our recommendation system, and also Open AI API for our chatbot. Next slide. Yeah, these are some sample system architecture slides that. Um, I, uh, the, the hackathons that I joined and you can have a look on it. Yeah, that's all from this section presentation. Next up, uh, we'll be have a two minutes break. And after that, we'll pass to Debbie to talk about how to pitch in a hackathon. Yeah, thank you. Remember to scan the QR code and drop any of your questions. We'll answer them later at the last part of our talk. Okay, so right now we have come to the last part of your entire hackathon journey. It is the day and you are required to give a nerve wracking pitching. So I think one of the misconceptions people usually have regarding pitching is to relate it to giving a presentation. I would say it's totally different because to pitch is actually to sell your idea and in order to sell your awesome idea you've got to pitch like a champ so that's how you secure your win you've got to pitch it like you think you are the champion because of, of the time you have spent on your solution you know of all the hard work it all boils down to that five minute 
pitch, pitch that will determine whether will you win the hackathon or not. So today I'll be talking about the little de small details that you have to take note in order to stand out among the rest of your competitors because you have to keep in mind that you're not the only one who is pitching. There's about 10 to 20 teams who are presenting or are pitching on stage. So imagine being a judge, you have to listen through even if a group has to pitch for three minutes, that's that's quite a lot. Of, that's about if 10 groups, then it's about 30 minutes. So what you want to do is you want to make the judges remember you and your solution. So these are a few details that can help you to stand up among your competitors. So I'll be talking about how you can design your slide. Secondly, outlining your script and see. Thirdly, creating an outstanding pitch that will help people to remember your solution and your pitch. Okay, so let's look into designing your slides. I think it's very important, I would emphasize, is to constantly use key points. You want to keep the text concise, use minimal text, because we don't want to overwhelm your audience. You have to keep in mind and take note that you only have three minutes to pitch and you have so many things to, to cover. You know, you've got your demo, your challenge statement, your problem statement. Some of it requires your business profile prospects. So you only spend literally 10 to 20 seconds per slide and you don't want to put so much information in it that will overwhelm your audience and would not give them sufficient time to look to read through every single thing. So use key points, keep text concise. So I can give you a few examples that we have used during our competitions. So just by looking at this, imagine if I pitch right now. So the pain points are so we face, we have noted that there are a few challenges that farmers face. So one of, firstly, they are unpredictable climate change. Secondly, water scarcity. And thirdly, threatening food security. See, that's just about a few seconds. And it's clearly conveyed, message is clearly conveyed to your audience. And then you can continue by asking, how then can we reimagine a self-sustaining farm which produces their own? Firstly, energy. Secondly, food. Thirdly, water, and lastly, is resilient to climate change. Like I said, few seconds, problem message is conveyed, and you don't want to overwhelm your your audience with too many words. Okay, one of the examples I can give is also the problem statement and the reality check that Yen Ro mentioned just now. Very simple. I can read everything, and it only takes about a few seconds. So remember to keep text concise, be direct, straight to the point. You don't, elaboration comes from your pitch, not from the slides. Main points are on the slides. That way you can direct and guide your audience as you speak. Okay, so secondly, avoid light colors. I think this is one thing that not many people will emphasize on because when you are pitching, when you're going to on stage, you have no idea how's the quality of the projector and you don't want this to be one of your problems. You know, it, it's really very stressful to go up on stage and pitch. So you don't want to end up having a non-visible slide. So be sure to avoid using yellow and white fonts. Those are big no's. Okay. Thirdly, clean layouts. You want to maintain a poly polished and cohesive look. You opt for non-uncluttered design. So ensure that each slide has a clear and distinct purpose. Okay, that way your audience and your your readers, your audience will be able to to you want to use the slides to guide them throughout the entire process. So make sure to have the clean layouts. And fourthly, Use attractive visuals, clean and easy to read. Okay, because we are all human beings, we're all visual beings. You want to have visual attractive slides. Because before you go up on stage, what is the first thing that is presented? What is the first thing that is seen? Your slides, correct? So you can actually tell whether has a group put into put effort into their slides, whether is it is it good, is it clean? Okay, you want to make a good first impression before you go up on stage just by your slides. And it's easier for you as well as a as a teacher with attractive visual, clean layouts, easy to read. You'll be able to help you to guide through your pitch. Okay, so 
Next up. So this is one of the examples. Like I said, you have so much to cover, but make it attractive. That way it will look much more pleasing to the eyes. And the last one is to record your demo. Okay, this one really depends on what kind of hackathon you are participating. If your hackathon is like a 24-hour hackathon, it's more towards the technical side where they want you to do a live demo, then go ahead with it. But then if it's, you know, like Kita Hack, there's so much to do. So what you need to do is, I would say it'd be good if you can record your demo because you only have five minutes to pitch and you don't want any malfunctions to happen. So the best way to ensure that everything goes on smoothly is to record your demo. So, and also when you're recording your demo, it will be good if you just state the brief function of each specific module in the slide. So one of the examples is like, for an example, if you look at this slide, you can see as I'm talking and as I'm elaborating on my demo, I can guide them by actually stating what kind of module am I in right now. So at least, you know, as they hear, they'll be able to know, okay, currently we are we are in the this module, tracker module, and maybe as we move on, then it'll be a chatbot module. So this is how you can actually help to guide your audience as you pitch. Okay, so next one. Um, Secondly, we'll be talking about how you can outline your script. Okay, firstly, start with a good opening, and secondly, try to create a storyline or flow. Okay. So starting with a good opening, I think I would like to emphasize on this because the moment you go up on stage, like I mentioned just now, there's a lot of competitors. Your competitors are, pre are pitching, and you want to, to capture your, your audience attention. So you have to make a very strong intro, I would say, because you want to capture their at attention. That way they'll be they'll only be able to stay on for your entire pitch. You want to capture their attention so that you can they can stay on for that five minutes and they'll actually listen to your pitch after listening to so many groups pitch. Okay. So one of them is the captivating hook, which is the fact-based hook. So you use you can turn it into a form of question, but it's a uh, fact-based. So for an example, coming strong, did you know that the stress levels experienced by pregnant women today often rival those seen in high-pressure corporate environments? So this is one of the examples that you can use. Secondly, you can start off with a bold statement. Okay, so in a rush to monitor every aspect of pregnancy, we may be overlooking the profound impact of emotional well-being on both the mother and the child. So like I said, bold statement hook, capture your audience just by the first sentence of your pitch. Thirdly, rhetorical question, okay? Pose a question, what if the weight of a mother's emotional health during pregnancy is as crucial as prenatal vitamins? So this is one of the examples that you can take note of. Fourthly, um, contrarian hook, Okay, you, there's a contrast in it. So in, fo in our focus on the physical aspects of pregnancy, have we overlooked the importance of preparing mothers emotionally? Right, so these are a few examples of captivating your audience with a good opening. Secondly, you can actually use, I'll, I'll be talking more on this later part. So you can actually introduce your character. So you can start off by saying, you know, meet Jack and Jill, soon to be parents on an accelerating journey to parenthood. So you're actually using this character as a user of your solution. Okay, so this is how you can start your pitch as well. Or relate to your audience. So for an example, if I'm pitching on a solution which is about, you know, digital online and you know, online learning. Okay, so Maybe I can connect with my audience by asking them, you know, bef before we start. So, hi, I'm Debbie. So, before I start my talk, show me your hands. Show me your hands if you ever felt sleepy attending an online talk. So, this is not just you. You get what I mean? So, you relate to the audience. You want to connect the opening, opening to a broader hackathon team or the shared experiences of the participants. So, you want to make it relatable and relevant. 
or maybe you can start with by posing the problem. So you can actually present the problem statement in a way that emphasizes its urgency and relevance. So you can actually help the audience understand why is this challenge, why is this challenge, you know, matters? Why does this matters? Because there's so many solutions, but why do you think out of all the problems that we face, why is it that you want to solve this problem? How big of a problem it is that it requires a solution? So that's what you want to convey to your, to your audience. So all the examples is start off that, did you know that UNESCO 2022 reported that almost 140 million students' education in Southeast Asia were disrupted due to online lockdown. Sorry, due to lockdown. Okay, so this is one of the examples where you can prob present your problem statement in a way that emphasizes how urgent it is for us to solve this problem. Okay. So secondly, we'll talk about how you can actually add in a character and make your entire pitch into like a story and to form a storyline out of it. So first you can start off with character introduction, like what I mentioned just now, you know, using Mint, Jack and Jill and so on. Okay, start off with the opening and then use your character to present the problem statement. So mention about the challenges faced by him or her. Then you can move on to the solution proposed to help him or her. So that's how you present your demo. Okay, so you are actually adding a character into it. You're not just saying, okay, we have come up with a solution. However, you phrase your sentences by using your character as a subject. So in the one of the examples I can give is so with this, with this, we have come up a solution that could help Jack by so 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 so. So Jack becomes your character becomes the subject. Okay, so then other info, you can talk about your market size, target audience, future plans, and all this. And then you will come out to end with the positive outcomes. So what the positive outcomes for, of your solution. So what kind of impact that you can bring to the table for your character. Okay, so one of the example, I will actually sort of pitch to show you how I maintain the entire storyline throughout the entire pitch. So for an example, opening statement. So good evening, everyone. My name is Debbie. And before we enter this talk, before I start with my pitch, allow me to introduce my character. So meet Sam. Sam is a third year student who struggles with online learning. So that's the character introduction. And it is known that Sam is not alone as UNESCO 2021 reported that almost 140 million students like Sam has their education disrupted due to the lockdown. There are a few challenges that Sam mentioned that has deterred him from fully paying attention in class. One of them is a decentralized platform confusing students and parents. Secondly, Sam's parents has been neglecting his learning activities due to a busy schedule. And thirdly, the lack of a guidance of a peer-to-peer -peer communications among Sam's teachers has made online learning way much more of a struggle than it is. So the question remains, how then can we use digital technologies to improve the quality of online learning and facilitate communications among parents, teachers, and students like Sam? Fear not, as we introduce QC in QT, a centralized and attractive platform that uses artificial intelligence to help students like Sam enjoy online learning. So then you can say, because of what, 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 then you can talk about this. So you enter into your demo. And then after that, you can talk about the impact that you can give to Sam by saying, with this, Sam's education will, we can increase the technical and vocational skills among students like Sam and so on. So as you can see throughout the entire pitch, Sam is my main character and this solution is catered towards students like Sam. So your main goal is actually to tell a compelling story and solution. That way you can actually help your 
your audience to stay on with you throughout the entire pitch. Okay, it's easier to follow with a storyline instead of just a pitch. So this is one of the ideas and one of the suggestions you can take note of when you outline your script. Okay, so last part, how do we then create an outstanding pitch? So there are four things that I will look, will look into. Firstly, first impression, setting the stage. Secondly, body language. Thirdly, memorize your script. And fourthly, practice makes progress. Okay, so let's talk about first impression and setting the stage. So I think this is one thing you can also take note is when you go out on stage, you want to look confident, let your entrance be a performance in itself. Like I said, this is all the small details that many people will overlook. So you want to, to stride off with purpose, you know, showing that the judges that, you know, I come fully prepared with my solution and that I'm here to solve this problem, which I think is urgent and it is in dire need to be solved. Okay, so be confident, enter the stage. I mean, you can see if you have seen a lot of keynotes, you know, by Sam Altman or Mark Zuckerberg or even like um, Steve Jobs, those people just by their walk, you can tell that I'm not, not saying that you have to do a whole catwalk on stage, no. Just go up confidently, chin up, posture straight and to show that, you know, I'm here to pitch my solution. Okay, next. You want to harness excitement, okay? Uh, this is one of the tips that I usually help myself to overcome anxiety because um, I actually do still feel anxious whenever I go up on stage. So what I do is I treat my mind and my brain by being excited, okay? Just imagine... You have already, just imagine you have already prepared so many weeks, so many months into your solution. So it's literally now or never. So you've got to feel that passion that you have when you are brainstorming all your problem statement. Harness that excitement, that passion, and let it be, let that, you step into, the, before you step into the spotlight, tap into that genuine excitement of your pitch, okay? So trick your mind by being excited because you can't be excited and anxious at the same time. If you don't believe me, you can try it. Yeah, you can't be, you can't be both. It's either you be anxious or you be excited. So you want to have that shift in mindset when you go up on stage to pitch. Okay, now let's talk about body language. Okay, confidence is the key. So you have to embrace the art of faking it until you make it, okay? Even if nerves flutter beneath the surface, project confidence outwardly. You have to learn to sort of like withhold your, your anxiety and your anxiousness. So what you can do by, by looking confident is actually to stand tall and maintain eye contact with your judges and let your posture radiate assurance okay always try to maintain eye contact if you can't maintain eye contact with one person just constantly shift but you want what you want to do is you want to maintain eye contact yes you can also look at your slides for guidance but try to give a brief moment and then go back into that eye contact that because only people who are confident are able to give eye contact so this is one of the the things that you can take note to project confidence. Okay, secondly, you want to express with your hands. I think I've been doing it for the entire, when I'm talking about um, this, this talk, it actually helps me to sort of frame my sentences and also to, to guide my audience. Because whenever I'm talking about points, I use my hands. You see, you're guiding your audience. So actually utilize your gestures to emphasize key points and they will actually add dynamism into your pitch and convey a sense of connection to your audience. So, you know, make full use of your hands. Okay, so thirdly, minimize script dependency. I think this is something, um, like I said, it's a small detail that you can look into. If you can talk without your script, your script then try to not not try to omit holding anything because if i were to to talk with my phone right now you can actually feel there's a barrier 
between us. Okay, so holding them can be a safety net for you, but it might create a barrier between us. Uh, between you and the audience, okay? You can also still use it, but try not to always look at your phone. Okay? Try to use your, 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 your script to guide you, not like literally read out of your script, okay? So use them only when needed so that you can ensure that connection with the audience and ensure that it remains strong. Fourthly, the art of slowness. I think I'm... Um, sort of speeding up a little okay so try to slow down your pace as actually this will actually help you to speak deliberately and it also exudes posture and composure so the advantage of speaking slowly is it actually gives you the chance to emphasize on a few words like especially when you're talking about your challenge statement emphasize give weight to a words that you think holds more weight okay emphasize on it so speak slowly don't have to talk really fast even though the time is ticking try to to time it well you know time your presentation well before your hackathon so that you don't feel anxious as you pitch okay now let's talk about memorizing your script okay um this is a quite a good advice i would say because memorizing your script not only helps you to get to to guard against forgetfulness it also reduces the, the dependence on written cue and it deepens your grasp on the context so combat this by committing your pitch to memory um this is actually because there's a possibility even though there's a possibility of you forgetting your script on stage memorizing your script will help you to deepen your understanding on it and you kind of know at the back of your of your mind you kind of know what is needed to be elaborated as you you use your slides as a guide not just for your audience but for yourself you know as you pitch so try to memorize your script if you can't memorize the whole entire script it's okay memorize the key points and the elaboration so that you cut and twist and you know just play with words and all but the key point is still there. Okay, it also actually empowers impromptu speaking. So it allows you to navigate impromptu questions or discussions with ease. Because uh, like I said, it depends your understanding on your, on your solution and it helps to internalize, helps you to internalize the message. So, and then you can, that helps you to do impromptu speaking and also, you know, Q and A show. Okay, so this is one of the advices. And last one, practice makes progress. Okay, so if you ask how do you confront stage fright, you've got to talk in front of a stimulated audience. And I don't mean by constantly going on on talks. You know, applying for workshops, asking GDSE, hey, you know, can I give a talk? Don't have to do such elaborate. Um, practices. What you can do is just get your friend, sit down, ask them whether, hey, you know, can I get a few minutes of your time? No, I just need you to sit down and listen to my pitch. Okay, that way you can actually help, it will actually help to stimulate the atmosphere of the actual pitch, which actually helps you to breathe confidence. So this is one thing that you can do, which is to 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 pitch in front of your friends or even your family members. Okay. So what if you don't, your friends have no time, your family members, and you're a bit embarrassed to do so? Practice in front of the mirror. This is one thing that I've been doing for the past few years. They always, because as you stand before the mirror, you are your most honest critic. You can actually see the way you talk and, and you actually take note of your expression of your hand gestures. So it actually fine tunes your delivery and boosts self assurance. So if you've got, you're a bit embarrassed and a bit shy to, to pitch in front of your friends, I think you can start off by pitching to yourself in the mirror, okay? So repeat for per perfection. Repeat, refine, repeat again, okay? It's, it's a continual process. The more you rehearse, the more polished and natural your pitch becomes. So as you as you constantly talk to people, 
you know, confined stage fright, you actually find that you get comfortable speaking to people and that will definitely be a plus point for you as you pitch in front uh, on the stage, you know, in a hackathon. Right. And yes, last part will be to, I think this is an advice that not many people will emphasize on, but it is good to always get a mentor because even by getting a mentor, you have already hold the upper hand of winning a hackathon. You have get to learn from experience, you know, from seniors or professors or anyone who has experience in hackathons. Get them to sort of brief you on what are the requirements, you know, what are the expectations, what do what is expected of you, you know, in, in this entire hackathon journey. So you, by getting their advice, you'll be able to get hold of what is needed, what are the preparations that has to be done before your your hackathon and that it doesn't come by surprise because it kind of feels a little bit scary just by the word hackathon. So try to get a mentor and, you know, by getting their advice, you'll be able to get constructive feedback on projects, ideas and overall performance and it definitely helps with your skill. I think I have definitely have to give credit to, to my mentors and to our mentor that has been giving us very constructive feedback uh, and also to fine tune, you know, the, the lack that can be seen in our pitch and in our solution. So get a senior, get a get mentor, get them to, to comment on your solution to ensure that it's practical and visible. And yes, enjoy the pro process your greatest potential remains a mystery until you put yourself out there. It feels very scary and intimidating to go on stage and talk and also to join a hackathon, but you never ever know your greatest potential. So just put yourself out, out there, try, you never know, you might end up winning champion. So yeah, so that is all for pitching. Now we will move on to our Q&A session. So we have a two minutes break before we move on to the Q&A session. So be sure to, to scan a QR code and drop your questions in it and we'll answer in, answer in a while.
Okay, I think we can start with our Q&A session right now. So we jump on the first question. So what do you recommend people Okay, what do you recommend people to learn before attending their first hackathon? Quite a few things actually. I think it also depends on what hackathon are you joining. Like for an example, Kita Hack, you are supposed to, uh, to, to, to code your solution. So you got to use Figma to design your entire solution. And I think technical wise, maybe you want to get Chun Rong or Zixing to, to talk about this. Mm, I think let me be first uh, explaining about it. So uh, what is uh, what do you recommend people for learn? Uh, actually, uh, it's based on what you need to do. Uh, if you, like you want your solution to be presented in the website or uh, mobile apps, of course you need to learn some uh, mobile uh, mobile application technology like Sparkles or uh, some web, web applications, Next.js, of course you have to have the, some of the technical skill so you can able to doing some prototype, simple prototype to present a solution. Yeah, this is uh, my idea for you guys. Yeah, yeah I can add, add on on that. So I think for me, I, I would recommend doing web technologies. Basically, web, the reason is you can with a single URL, you can let the judges to access the, yeah. Whereas for mobile application, you might need, a, uh, you might need your mobile phone to be passed to the judges to build. This is, um, yeah. Whereas a web application, you can turn it into progressive web app, which is like a application that you can download to your uh, mobile device as well. So, Learning web technologies. This is what my personal recommendation uh, for the for your first hackathon. Yeah, thanks. And I think one more thing to add is you also think also take note of you know each of the members, your team members' ability, so you can have diverse. Our skill set. Okay, we have people who are good at designing. Someone who's good at front end, back end. That way, it will help you, so it doesn't feel very overwhelming. Just by you know, sort of got a whole list of things to to learn before your first hackathon. So make full use of your teammates. Get people of diverse skill set. That way, it will help you to 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 come out with your solution and even to code it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I think settled. Done. So, second Q and A. In preliminary round session, must I submit a working solution, or can I just submit an ML model and components, then just talk on the concepts? I think this one have to look at the requirements. I'm assuming they are talking about Kita Hack, right? Yeah, I think. What are the requirements? Can't remember. I think maybe we can get Ginny to talk about this later. Yeah. Uh, I, I think for GitHack, for the preliminary round, uh, you can just submit anything that you have and talk about how they uh, connect with each other because uh, the judges will be the one judging your submission. So, you can just submit whatever you have, then it will depend on them to see how many ones to give you. Yeah. Okay, I think. so is testing your application necessary? Internally, yes, you have to test your application. Whether will the judges test your application or not, then that's another question. I'm assuming that you're talking about those live hackathons. Yeah. So, okay, I think uh, we can actually, move I on. Actually, I can add on, on testing yeah. Okay. the application. Yeah, so testing during the development of your application, you, you need to constantly test on it, but you might not um, write uh, for example, PyTest in Python or Jazz or Cypress in JavaScript. You might not 
write those kind of test cases uh, in your application, it takes a lot of time uh, to actually write uh, the test cases for that, like assert something equals to something, and there's a uh, performance testing as well. You, it is advised to not write those test cases uh, for your application because it took so long and it's time consuming. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so can we have the slides after today's sharing? From where can we get the slides? Thank you. Yeah, I think we can send the slides later in the chat so you can you can have access to it. Yeah, okay, so next, as a design major in Kita, how can I learn all the necessary skills to submit a solid solution with zero to minimal knowledge in coding? I would say the answer is kind of yes, if you have, you know, teammates, who can code. So you can just focus on the design and teammates will do all the coding. But if you, you're asking if you can submit a solution with zero coding, then it's a no. Yeah. Okay. So hi. Yeah, hi. Okay, next question. <laughs> Can't think of any ideas, LOL. Um, it's time for brainstorming session. Yeah, okay. So where do you find the sub goal of a SDG goal? You can find it on the internet and also the sustain SDG goal website. Yeah, you have it all there. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, I will so these are all the sub. So uh, in the SDG, obviously you just, you know, Google search SDG and then this is the first page that will be pop up. <clears throat> And you know, at here there's all the seventeen SDGs. And if you want to know the sub goals, you just right come click into the bottom more info. <clears throat> and then at this tab, targets. Uh, this is the overviews of the SDG. But if you want to get detailed, I guess click on this tab, targets in the indicators, and then you can see. I answer the question. Okay, so how much time should be allocated for this part? I think you must have submitted this after the framing your problem statement and your solution. Yeah, it actually really depends on how much things do you need to present in the entire page. Yeah, so make sure to manage your time wisely and see whatever you, how much time you need to put in each slide. Technically, yeah, it depends because demo part, then you have to spend more time. So try to to, to give about a few 10 to 20 seconds for slides like problem statement, target audience, market size, and all this kind of business prospect. Oh yeah, okay, so is business prospect really a must in every pitching? It depends on the hackathon that you're yeah, joining. Sorry, sorry, so to, if it, sorry, sorry to jump yeah. Um, Sorry to jump in. Uh, that's okay. Yeah, I'll just add on on these questions because I think it's referring to the brainstorming part and how to the problem statement part. And for how much time should be allocated on the on framing your problem statement and brainstorming, Um, it's, it's it varies according to the hackathon that you join. But um, you need to allocate not more than, it's my advice, not more than 10 to 20% of your total time. Uh, so make sure that you have all your teammates together and make the 10 to 20% of your time a very quality time so that all of your, all of your teammates can brainstorm together and document all the brainstorming session. Make it a quality time and make sure that before you move on to the designing or the coding part, or the development process, you have a solid ideas. Uh, get your mentors, ask your mentors before you're moving on to the uh, development part. Yeah, okay. So I think the business prospect part really depends on the hackathon that you're, you're going for. Yeah, so I think kind of answered that. So any tips on turning design from Figma 
or Adobe to development first. Yes, maybe. Yeah, I can I can mm. add on on that. Yeah, so mostly will be on like focusing on learning, or say CSS cascading starship. If you are building like web app, web application, um, yeah. So focus on that, and you are very yeah. You can be very smart on converting those Figma and Adobe XD prototype into real system very fast yeah maybe Chun Rong can add, add more on that as well mm, i think the most important thing for the figma uh wait can can you go back to the question uh yeah i think there's another important things uh you we need to take care about is a uh, responsive web app because uh some of uh some of us we only focus on uh, we design a, a web app for based on the Figma, but uh, you need to think about uh, instead to really uh, uh, take care about the responsive web app. If we need to doing this uh, responsive, we need, might need to take much time to do it. As uh, we need to uh, doing some testing for every uh, desktop or that desktop app. Is that the screen size is similar to the design or not? And then another thing, uh, most uh, actually I'm more focused on the mobile apps development. For mobile apps development, actually is much more easier if you want to compare to Figma for, for me, uh, for my opinions. As uh, if you're using uh, some of the technologies like Flutter, uh, Google technologies, actually there's a lot of syntax that help you to uh, cope with the CSS stuff. So you don't need to have a fancy uh, CSS and uh, 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 tailwinds or something as uh, actually for the uh, factor like Google technologies, there's a lot of uh, things like paddings and built-in components, you can easy to use it. And for design part, actually it's no much problems. And you can just uh, refer to YouTube and some of the uh, uh, tutorials, and then you can master it very fast. Compared to uh, you read some of the basic CSS, it's really, really a wasting of time. If you want to doing a fake mask or doing your web app faster, yeah. So this is my opinion. Yeah. If you comparing to if you want to use React Native or Flutter, I think I more suggest Flutter because you don't need to learn about serious stuff for a while. Yeah, this is my opinion. Yeah, and also I would like to add a few points on these questions. There's lots of plugins in Figma and Adobe XD um, into uh, in turning the designs into the CSS code, but it's static. Um, so just take those plugins with a grain of salt, but it's always helpful if you can't figure out something. So like utilizing those plugins from Figma, as well as like um, you utilize the UI library as what uh, Zijing mentioned earlier, UI library, instead of like designing all by scratch. Yeah, if you are using CSS, you might as well, try to win CSS. Yeah. Okay, so can we still use Open AI API? Why Open AI API is not accurate? So previously we used it for our chatbot. Yeah, we use the free trial and so yes, you can still use it. Okay, so think any add-ons from the rest? Okay, if not, then we can move on to the next question. So how to speak in front of a crowd? Seems a little bit overwhelming just by by this question i think um you can start to firstly i think be well prepared yeah be well prepared with whatever that you're going to talk remember your points your key points if you are very scared if you're not confident of impromptu speaking then you can start off by memorizing your script then from there pitch to a crowd and start to maybe pitch in front of your family members 
or your friends. Yeah, start small or even start with mirror rehearsals. Yeah, okay. So when you develop your product that requirements payment like a GCP, how do you all handle it? You all pay and get, get reimbursement from hackathon organizer. No, we did not. We use um, all free trials. I don't think so that's reimbursement, but I think Ginny can add on on this to clarify. Um, I think for Hack, not really. But I think for Solution Challenge, they, I, I, I haven't really checked on it, lah, but for Solution Challenge, I think there is there is some kind of uh, free credits for you to use. Okay, so will these slides and the rec recording be made available after the meeting? Yes. I'm using some designs from the internet. Is this allowed? Yes, because you're going to alter the design anyways. So I think, yes, make full use of open sources. Okay, are there any hackathons that don't have any many participants? There are actually, so it really depends on your searching skills. Yeah, so go for them. Okay, so for AI applications, do we need to build ML models from scratch or can we just use open AI API? Is there any other AI model API freely available? I think it depends on what kind of AI, what kind of mo models you are, you are creating as well. Any add-ons from the rest? Yeah, if, if let's say the organizer give you the data, you obviously need to build an entire ML model from scratch based on that data. You should like uh, collect the data and also train the model and submit it as an API, I, I would say. And yeah, if uh, you, can we just use open AI API? Yeah, you can, as long as you pay for it. And is there any other AI model API freely available? Yeah, obviously there are tons of API out there. Yeah, like for example, SMB AI, like other hugging face as well, hugging face inference API for large language model. And you can also host your own AI model API using for example, you are using TensorFlow.js, you can find the pre-trained uh, TensorFlow.js model in .tf.js file format, and you can host it directly in, say, Express Server, or you can host in Python as well. Fast API might be the great option. Yeah, that's all. Any add-ons from others? Thanks. No, no add-ons. <laughs> Yeah, I think like the one that Zijing mentioned just now regarding the data, if let's say a hackathon, so one of them is UN hackathon, UN hackathon actually gives you data. So you have to, to code it from scratch. Yeah. So what's the startup prototype website you mentioned just now? Sorry, I missed it. Yeah, it is Y Combinator. So maybe Yenro can go and add a new tab and then search for YC. YC. Yeah. Yeah, this one. It is a startup incubator and inside the site you can find a startup directory which involves I think this one is about two percent acceptance rate for startup funding. So you can find it in companies that on top. Uh, the tab on top companies. Yeah. Normally, I will search ideas from here, basically. Yeah, thanks. Uh, later, um, about all the all the websites that Tsing and others mentioned. We will try to put them into our slides and you can find those websites in our slides later. Right.
Yeah, okay, moving on to the next question. Can we look at script while pitching? Yes, you can. But the main thing is, the main goal is to actually stand out from the rest of your competitors. So if you actually are able to not look at your script while pitching, it will actually leave a better impression to the judges. Yeah, so you can, you can definitely look at your script. Okay, is it okay if I still join a hackathon despite lacking some technical knowledge? I only know about C, C++, Java, and Python, some database fundamentals. I think you definitely can because um, you can't be fully prepared for a hackathon. Yes, you already have all these technical knowledge, but actually during a hackathon, you will learn as you, as you code along the way. So yeah, go for it. Any add-ons from the rest? Uh, you should okay. just register yeah. hackathon straight away yeah. without thinking that you have a uh, lack of knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Just just sign up. You will worry about it later. Yeah. Just just sign up for it. Okay. So, so based on your experience, does the judges actually check that your application or they only know what you presented to them? It depends on the hackathon as well, because some features actually involves direct pitching where you have your 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 laptop and then the judges right beside you those are i think 24 hours hackathons where you don't go on stage and pitch to them so normally for hackathons they don't really check your application but then you have to make sure that your your application is is valid because you gotta be prepared if they actually want to you to present to them live so yes not not often but always be prepared, prepared for it okay i have one member that okay next thing we can move on to the next question i have one member that wants to take charge of everything but has no bad ways to do so and another inactive should i look for another a new group okay this is <laughs> i see people not i see yenro nodding her head um uh, please do so please Find yeah, I one. think <laughs> in a way, yes, but try to talk to them first. If really nothing gets gets past them, then I would say move on because they're just going to be a, a dead weight and probably cause you more stress. So yeah, group members are very important. Okay, can we have the link for the slides? Yes, you can. Okay, is web more preferable or mobile app? I think this one, Surong has already mentioned. But, sorry, Zing or Chunrong, one of them. But yeah, because you got the URL, uh, judges can actually access to them directly from the URL. Okay, so I think um, that's uh, why open AI API not accurate. Probably have to ask Sam Altman that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think um, that's about it. We are it. not very updated. Yeah. We are not very updated on the open AI. A, mm. open AI API, but when we use it in March this year, it's uh, not accurate. Yeah, because of the GPT version, because we only use like GPT two or three, right? Yeah, so the higher the version three, gets, yeah. I believe that it will get accurate. Maybe the, the thing or two can add on some that on the GPT version. Oh, for uh, the actually, I have no idea about that. No idea. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um. Any more questions? I think if, if there's no other questions, I think I will pass the time back to to Ginny. Okay. So thank you, Debbie, Yenro, Chunrong, and Zing for the amazing sharing session on mastering the art of pitching. So now we will be taking a group photo together. So participants, uh, you can t turn on your camera. Yeah. Okay, we can wait for a few more minutes for more participants to open the camera.
Okay, so uh, I, I think we can just take the photo first. Huh? Okay, so on my account, uh, uh, I think I need to find the... Okay, so okay, on my account, uh, 3, 2, 1, smile. Okay, uh, 3, 2, 1, smile. Okay, so uh, we, we do one more post, which is like this. Um, yeah, this is a GDIC sign. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, okay, three, two, one, smile. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, I think we are done already. So, wait, ah. Okay, so before we end our session, actually, yeah, this workshop, uh, this workshop is part of the Kita 2024 workshop um, organized by GDSUM. So for those of you that are interested in joining GDSC, eh, not joining GDSC, sorry, joining Kitai 2024, um, and if you haven't already, you may just scan the QR code on the screen to register your team and yourself as well. Then, yeah, we are very interested to see how this workshop uh, impacts your pitching soon in the Kitai uh, pitching session later on. Yeah. And after you have done everything, then yeah, you, you can just leave. Jin, Jin, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you want us to pass the slides to them? Oh, you, you can just send it to me. Then I will I will place it in the um event page. All right, thanks. Uh, same for the recording as well. Right, thank you guys. Uh, if you guys have registered yourself uh, to join Kita Hack, then you can leave it. Okay, thank you everyone.